she's gone, and now it's just me, viewing the sprawling, decrepit estate. Uh, I'm very much considering that. Let's get a PB and J. You haven't had anything to eat all day. The only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and the moans of the ancient place. A PB and J sounds exactly like what you need to take on the rest of the day. You head to the kitchen. You're back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need some wine, some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, a plate, and a knife. We're gonna talk to the cat. She's hissing at me. You might want to talk to me, but I don't want to talk to you. Go away. Tell me about Tabitha. What can you tell me about my cousin? This is the first time I've met her. Spare me your life story. Tabitha at least knows not to bother me. What about my aunt? Can you tell me about Pearl Ann? I never knew my aunt. She's dead. I don't waste my time on corpses. Practical cat. What's in the sealed off part of the estate? Nosy, aren't you? But of course I'm not surprised. You seem to enjoy poking your head where it doesn't belong. If you won't take the hint, I'll suppose I'll have to take things into my own hands. Oh, she bit me. Rufu lunges at your hand and bites you hard. You back away. Alright. Let's look for PB and J stuff. As you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note aped to the door reading Janie, stay out in all caps. Below its separate handwriting are the words Okie dokie. You open the fridge, you already feel the deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. That is so much jelly. Um Uh, check mayonnaise. You know, you probably shouldn't, but part of you has to know how old that mayonnaise is. Pick up the jar, it's labeled flaking in your hand. It expires ten years ago. This jar of mayonnaise is old enough to graduate the fifth grade. You put it back, and best put it back and forget you ever saw it. Get some jelly. Reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. This is... Let's see what's in here. Take out milk, butter, mayonnaise that could be in fifth grade, peanut butter ice cream. I should have given her the peanuts. She would have liked them. She likes peanuts. This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly's just one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. All you need now is a plate, a knife, bread, and some peanut butter. Better close this fridge and keep looking. Uh, I do want to see what's in the old takeout. Oh god. Why did you do that? What were you expecting? This takeout container is disgusting beyond words. A liquefied mess of wholly congealed... Oh god, it hit styrofoam shell. You can't even tell what it used to be. That's awful. The substance doesn't just smell bad. It smells ancient. I'm not eating it. Your body reacts before you even register what you're doing, compelled by a deep primal disgust. I don't know if you can die in this game. I don't want to find out by eating ancient takeout. You shove the container back in the fridge, pushing it into the depths of the shelves and out of your mind. Hopefully you can forget exists and move on with your life. Close the fridge. Turn to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. Alright, um, let's search the pantry. That's probably where peanut butter is. That's a lot of peanut butter and bread. Tabitha sure loves her mac and cheese. That's a lot of mac and cheese! Alright. Let's examine it. It's craft. You pick up a box of Tabitha's mac and cheese. You can't say you've never seen the brand before. Alright. There's a- Oh, there is a dead mouse on the shelf. Look at that. That's sad. Put that back. Staying away from the mac and cheese was one of your cousin's hard rules, and she already seems to not like you. I want her to like me. Put the box back where you found it, reluctant to make things worse than they already are. Take the bread. Pick up one of the non-moldy loaves of bread. Great. Step closer to a satisfying snack. Alright. And some peanut butter. <laughs> That's funny. The king of nut butters and only 3% of each jar is mashed up cockroaches. That's true. The only thing you need now are a plate and a knife. Close the pantry. Alright, we are going to check the garden, but I'm going to finish this sandwich. 
Let's count. It must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware, and oddly enough, the utensils. Huh. I do want to see this mug. Blowing Rock. I was blown away at Blowing Rock, North Carolina. So your aunt cousin actually traveled sometimes, even if it was only a few hours from the estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through Blowing Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. Let's see the shot glass. I survived Deb's 50th. <laughs> your aunt's name is Pearl Land, so this wasn't from her 50th. But the few stories you heard from your mom, Pearl Land wasn't the type to have kitschy friends who gave out themed shot glasses at the birthday parties. Alright. Plate and knife. This is the last ingredient you need to make your PB&J. Time to get to work. Close the cabinet. I don't need a bowl. Let's check the garden. Then we'll make the sandwich. Oh, it's so pretty! Look at that statue. The garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. If oh, and a swing! It might not be very safe, but who's to stop you from venturing deeper? Let's explore the garden. Wander farther into the garden. It's quiet out here. Turn to the kitchen. Get back inside and close the door behind you. Make that PB and J. Despite the state of this horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations! You can feed yourself. Nice. That looks good. A hey, achievement. A job well done. All of that hassle and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Alright, I'm done here. Congratulations, you've eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? We're going to the room. Now that you've finally eaten, the aches and pains of your journey have started to sink deep into your bones. You stumble up the stairs to your room, suitcase in tow, eager to unwind before you face the rest of your day. Stand at the entrance to your room. We are going to look at everything. Spare clothes in the dresser. <gasps> There's a possum in here. North America's only marsupial. Drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. A possum lurks within. It's ang it's quiet, but angry. Afraid. Aww. Uh. Hi, friend. I know her. Afraid. Let's give him some boiled peanuts. You hold out your still dripping bag of boiled peanuts. Afraid to death come for Dustin. <laughs> Dustin, no! <laughs> Close the drawer. You might as well leave Dustin be. Give him the top drawer next. It's empty and as good a place you'll find to put your clothes. I want to be to friends with Dustin. Based off the estate of the house, you wonder if you'd been better off keeping your clothes in a nice clean bag, but there's no going back now. Check the closet. Oh, that's scary. You said why you see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stocked up in here. Pick up the doll. Of course you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You pick it up to examine it more closely. Its foot reads, Property of Alexandria. No need to carry this around with you. Close the closet. Uh, look out the window. There's the garden. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you owned this place, you'd totally get out there with a shuttle and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. I wouldn't. I don't like gardening. You go out and pull weeds, chop trees, carve topiaries, and do whatever you need to do to return it to its former glory. And once it was done, you'd sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, that's fair, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. Yeah, you'd definitely do that, just not right now. Well, yeah, I don't live here. Examine the painting on the wall. This must be an old relative of yours, very old, judging by the dates and the inscription. You never heard of her, but you never heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago, so that's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet next time you see her. That is, if she's actually in the mood for conversation. All right, that's enough of this room. I want to go to town. Doesn't seem like there's much else to do here. Mm. Yeah, okay. With Tabitha gone, there's no one stopping you from going to the forbidden wings of the estate. Immediately try the nearest door, only to be impeded by locks and chains. There's a dock. Might as well head to town. With your cousin gone, there's nothing for you to really do here. You drop your bags off in your room and head out to explore the town. 
you had known you'd wind up walk having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seems to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension, though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. Whoa. It really is pretty out here. Finally, you made it back to town. Statue. A holler, as that guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. So has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but the sidewalks are cracked, and many of the storefronts are boarded up, their windows dusty with age. Chill breeze sweeps down the lane, and you shudder suddenly, feeling as if you're peering into a grave. A dog! Crutch and come back, quit bothering strangers. Hi, puppy. Why, I do declare, who is this stranger, and why does she smell of peanut butter? Sorry about that. Gretchen can be very slippery when she wants to be. She loves to get loose and cause havoc. Mothman shirt. Uh... I was gonna say, it's nice to meet Gretchen. It's nice to meet you, Gretchen. My oh my, I can't remember the last time I met a newcomer who was so wonderfully polite. <laughs> it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, that's a funny way to introduce himself. I'm Stella. Not often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of old folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. You're in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet funeral? just really wants me to give somebody these peanuts. Uh, yeah. Yep, just got into town today. Wow, I didn't think that there would be anyone else coming. Are you staying with Tabby? How's she holding up? Upon mention of your cousin, Gretchen wonders under her breath. One of those days I'll get that tap to pet me. <laughs> I haven't seen her since Pearl Land passed. We're for a while before that, now that I think about it. Uh... Let's do the explore option. Did you say Tabby? I can't imagine Tabitha ever by go going by something so bubbly. She did back when I knew her better. It's been a while. I hope she's okay. I'm worried about her. I am. She seems upset. She's always been a little rough around the edges, but I figured she'd probably be having a rough go of things. She and her mom were really close. To think she's been up in that old mansion all by herself. It'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even if she doesn't think so herself. How long have you known her? Well, quite a long time. The town's really small, so everybody's known everybody else as far back as they can remember. Tabby and I got a little closer when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer's Night Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was a little more prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated and that was that. I haven't seen that girl or her horrible little cat since I was middle-aged. Oh, before it slipped my mind, if you're staying up in that spooky old mansion, you must have met the Fru-Fru. How does that monster fare? Uh... I'm talking to this dog. Sounds like you have history. Wait, what? Are you messing with me? You can't actually talk to my dog, right? Yeah, you've discovered my dark and terrible secret. <laughs> I can talk to animals, and animals can talk to me. Your dog sounds like a southern belle when she talks. <laughs> yeah, of course you're joking. You and Stella maintain silent, awkward eye contact. Well, next time you see that devil, please send my regards, and do let her know that not only do I, do I still draw breath, but that I very much still plan to outlive her. Oh, if you just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee, and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat! Yes. Biscuits. Oh. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air, in contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate. The diner is filled with the comforting din of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. I'm just gonna say hi. Just in town for the funeral. Before anyone can respond, you and Stella slide into a booth, pretending the whole town didn't just gawk at you like a sideshow attraction. 
Looks like your entrance was a little more dramatic than you were expecting, huh? Look at that dog. Folks around here don't meet any many strangers as is, and with who you're related to, well, let's just say you'll be the talk of the town for a while. Yeah, those guys are whispering about me. And they're cops. Ew. Hey, Stella. I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. They gracefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Aw, oh, shucks. Thanks, Avery. Here's some bacon for the little lady. Aw, for me? For me? Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Tip, you can hit the H button on your keyboard to hide the text box. Yes. These were very good instructions. Thank you, video game, for letting me see this puppy dog eat, eat bacon. Bring that back. <laughs> Anything for you? I'm not giving anybody my peanuts, except for the possum. Maybe. Biscuit and coffee. Could I have a biscuit and a coffee, please? I heard they were really good. Best in the county. Avery pours the fragrant brew in the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and, uh, sorry for your loss. Before you had a chance to respond, they're gone. That you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyway, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral, too, so it'll be a special occasion. Uh, yeah, I want to hear about the reading adventure, please. I'm sorry, did you just say the library has a reading adventure? Haha, uh, yeah, Oscar's all about keeping things on theme, so this month it's a bunch of ghost stories. That does sound fun. I think he's calling it Spooky bo Bookies. <laughs> you know, like how a ghost would say it. That's perfect. Cool, we should check it out this week. But that's really just an afternoon. Any idea what you want to do for the rest of the week? Uh... But I can to support Tabitha, I guess. I kind of assumed I'd be spending my time trying to help Tabitha, but with how quickly she ran off today, I'm not sure if that's enough for a full schedule. That's really sweet of you, but you're right. That'll definitely still leave you with plenty of time to kill. Have you thought about exploring the local trails at all? I'm usually out there a few nights a week for my job, and I'd be happy to show you around. Before Stella can finish, Avery returns, biscuit in tow. There's nothing else coming for me? Gosh, if I'd known that plate of bacon would be my main and only course, I'd have waited before digging in. Look at that shy puppy face. Absolute feature. Here's your biscuit. Winnie says it's on the house. She sends her condolences. Oh, thanks, Winnie. Oh, you didn't have to do that. It looks great. No worries. Hope you enjoy it. Pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. I love biscuits. You take a bite, it melts in your mouth as if nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. That sounds so good. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. I want biscuit. Whoa. This is a really good biscuit. Wow. I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, has Stella mentioned she's famous? <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not gonna go around tuning your own horn, you know I'm gonna do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. How's that going for you, Stella? Wow, that's rad. I've never met a YouTuber before. I'd love to check out your channel at some point. Aw, oh, thanks. It's nothing much. It pays the bills mostly, but it's mostly a passion project, you know? Uh, if anybody would like to subscribe to my channel, there's a button down below there. It says subscribe. You can click on it. That'd be nice, but you don't have to. I'm not your mom. She's selling herself short. Her stuff is amazing. She hunts cryptids. That's so cool. I think the best videos to start with would be that river one. Not the lake, but, you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Cadabba, the, the Cadabba, the river runner. I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. 
So the River Runner is a cryptid that's only known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird at the cabin up at the river. And that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. So it pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in the river. That sure is a something. Book smart. The size and the shape of the creature's body tells you it's likely a predator and definitely not a wolf. You seem to recall that mountain lions used to live up here. Who's to say if there aren't a few left? Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I'd seen. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara that must escape from a local wildlife sanctuary. It was a mountain lion. I could smell it stink from miles away. I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm the only one who saw that thing with my own two eyes. Um... I don't want to be mean, because she seems really excited about it. That's an honest to god cryptid there. No way that's a beaver or a dog, and there's no way a capybara would be swinging in a river in the mountains of North Carolina. Unless there's some North American colony of capybaras living in Appalachia. <laughs> that would still count as a cryptid, wouldn't it? Yeah, until someone catches a capybara up here, it would still count as a cryptid by most standards. My comment section went nuts for this footage, and from there it spreads Twitter pretty fast. There were polls for days. I had actual experts playing in. It was a whole really cool experience. And that meant the video did some pretty great numbers. Personally, I'm a fan of the Capybara theory. <laughs> Me too, Avery. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of a sewer gator type situation. <laughs> exactly, some exotic pet owner set it free, and now it'll forever roam the cabin up confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. So, speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if maybe you'd want to come along? I want nothing more. It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm gonna go after the... Wait, no spoilers! Whoops, sorry Avery. It's okay, I should probably get back to it instead of staying around chatting with friends. See y'all around. Bye Avery. Now that the coast is clear, I'm going after Skunk. <laughs> What is skunk ape? It's like a Bigfoot, but smellier. Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida, but while I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from a town over claims to have seen one on her deck playing tug war with her dog. And as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. So you wanna say, wanna tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate against a darkening sky, that sort of thing? Absolutely. I'd love to come along. That's great! It's been a while since I've had anyone besides Gretchen out there with me, and this is going to be a lot of fun! I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in middle school, so it's kind of like a blast from the past. Me and Ken Kenika and Reese running around the woods, flipping over rocks, fathering sal salamanders. Our videos were terrible. We had a lot of fun, and that's all that mattered to us. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd ever be down to come along with us and get the old gang back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. Reese, I think there's a decent chance we can get him to come out of his hiding hole if he's up for it. You mind if I make a quick call? Stella pulls out her phone and dials, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? Feels like it's been forever. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by, or...? Okay, if you're really sure, but if you change your mind... Oh, I was just calling to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. She's tapped with his cousin. I know, yeah, just here for the week. Anyway, we're going out to look for Skunk Ape. We could take the easier trails if that would help. Dang, man, that sounds awful. I hope we take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hangout. How's that? Yeah, I'll bring her. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Reese, there's always something off about that boy. I never did like the smell of him. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. He asked you to bring me to his house. Why? He's excited to meet you, of course. I think you'll find that most folks in town are. Is he okay? He's not feeling well, that's all. He's had a lot going on in the past, gosh, ten years or so. But I feel like it's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh well, it's not my place to talk about, really. I just got a little excited thing about having him along. He's hilarious. You'd love him. We should swing by his place sometime this week. 
That'll be nice. I'd love to meet your friends. Awesome. I'll make it happen. It's definitely the trickier one to meet. Kanika is much easier to track down. She's just at the general store basically every day. But friendship can wait. We've got Skunk Ape to hunt. So we should probably head out if we want to make it up the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. You pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. Um, Generous tip. Five dollar bill. Bit more than one would expect to get from such a short dining experience, but you might as well share the wealth while you've got it. Smooth out the bill before placing it on the table inconspicuously. Oh, that's awesome of you. Avery will appreciate that, I'm sure. So I'll turn to leave the diner with you, falling close behind. Look at that pupper dog. It hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon and chill descends upon the hollow, you see your situation with renewed clarity. You're in a new place, far from civilization, and the people you fall and p people you know, following someone you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. That's a good point. I didn't really think about that, that I just met this person. And now we're going to the woods. But I guess that's just how it goes sometimes. 